Hi, this is Lillian with My Christian Films. We're here at Northland Church in Orlando, where we're getting ready to interview Christian artist Chris Sly, who's having a concert here tonight. What's up, guys? My name is Chris Sly, and you are watching MyChristianFilms.org. Okay, so we're here outside of the Northland Church. You can see people lined up. Oh, they all got really quiet. Yeah. So everyone's lined up. They're really excited to see all the artists, and they're ready to go in. So are you excited about the concert tonight? We've been here since 5 o'clock, so yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> are you excited to see anyone in particular? Yes, of course, Aaron Schuess and, and um, uh, Chris, because I watched them on the American Idol. So, yeah, all of them, actually. Who are you excited to see? Uh, Chris Lye. Are you excited about the concert tonight? Yeah. <gasps> really? Do you know who you want to see? Mm -hmm. Who? Do you know their names? <laughs> Chris Lye. Chris Lye? <gasps> He's great, isn't he? <laughs> father was a musician and a songwriter. Did he inspire you to become a musician? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, my dad, uh, by the time that I came along, my dad was kind of in uh, into a more conservative form of Christianity than, uh, than what I would be now. Um, very conservative Baptist, but, uh, you know, he played the guitar around the house, and that was always fun to watch. So when and why did you, be, did you start believing in Christ? Well, my dad was a missionary, uh, and so and my grandfather was a missionary, and my uncles were missionaries, and uh, pretty much everybody in my family uh, were all in the ministry. So I grew up in the ministry and around it, and uh, you know made a profession of faith when I was really young, like four years old, and uh, you know at the age of fifteen, kind of realized that I needed to trust him more than just a prayer that I prayed when I was you know four years old, and uh, and so I I uh, got saved when I was fifteen, and I guess at the age of like. 21 was when I really decided to follow hard after Christ, and um, and I've never looked back. I think everybody has those things that they hold on to. For me, it was, uh, you know, I had some bitterness from some stuff that happened really early on in, in my life and when I was a teenager, and, uh, you know, those were the things that I had to overcome and forgive, and definitely, you know, that wouldn't have happened had it not been for a relationship with Christ. Okay, so I have to ask you about your American Idol experience. Yeah. So what made you decide to audition for American Idol? I had a friend that just said, you know, uh, this is your last year to try out. You should try out and, um, you know, I'll pay for you to go down. So I, you know, I couldn't turn down a free trip to Birmingham, Alabama. I mean, who can? <laughs> so uh, we went down and uh, went to Alabama and I tried out and ended up making all the way to the top ten. So it was awesome. So since you didn't get to go to church, would you have, would you like set aside, aside a time in the day where you could worship or... Yeah, I mean, I, my church has online. The church that we were going to uh, in South Carolina was a place called Seacoast Church, and um, and they have you know all their services are online. So I would go and watch. Uh, you know, most Sundays I'd go and watch uh, the services at, from Seacoast. Are there any particular artists that you look up to? Well, like I started off only listening to Christian music. Um, when I was younger, and uh, it was Stephen Curtis Chapman and Michael W. Smith and Jars of Clay and DC Talk, you know, that, those were who were popular when I first started listening to music. And I would say that those were definitely the ones that have inspired me the most because, um, you know, back then they were just making music that was trying to change the world. And I think that's something that we're missing in Christian music now is that it's become very inward focused. and. Um, you know, I feel like the goal of Christian music, again, not for everybody, but the goal of Christian music should be to change the world. Keep me 
co-wrote the song Here Comes Goodbye. Mm -hmm. How did it feel to have award-winning country music group Rascal Flatts release this song as a single and have it go to number one on the charts? Oh, of course it was pretty awesome. And, um, you know, basically it allows me to not make a decision based on, uh, you know, whether or not something is going to do well financially. It kind of allows me to have financial freedom, which is awesome. Um, and it's an honor, too, and it opens up a lot of doors to write with whoever I want to write with. And um, so that's been pretty incredible. And, uh, I mean, just one of those lottery kind of things. I mean, yeah. to, to get a Rascal Flats cut, I mean, they had at one point, I think, like 1,500 songs that they had on hold, and they cut 12. Wow. You know, so to be one of those 12 really is like winning the lottery. So <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Well, that being said, would you rather write songs to sing for yourself or write for other artists? Uh, both. You know, I produce, and um, I don't know that I would ever want to choose. I think I'll always, always do the artist thing, you know. I hope I don't have to do, uh, you know, for the rest of my life. When I'm 50 years old, I don't want to be in a van, you know, traveling around and, and sleeping in a van. Uh, I'm 30 years old, and I'm having a hard enough time doing it <laughs> as it is, you know. Um, so I hope I'm not having to do that when I'm 50, but you know I think there will always be the artist thing because I, I feel like I have something to say that's mm -hmm. more personal, but then I can always write love songs and, and write with other artists and produce other artists and stuff like that. So you do like to write other songs that are not just Christian oh, yeah. songs? And oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like uh, we have this idea in, in, uh, in the Christian market and in the church that Christian music is defined by the songs that we sing on Sunday morning. And in reality, you know, I think that... Um, you know, God God is honored by us eating and drinking. I think he's okay with me writing a love song, yeah. you know, uh, or writing a song that isn't necessarily, you know, if we look at Psalms as, as our picture of what uh, songwriting should be, uh, you know, yeah, there are the Psalms where David's lifting up his hands and going, you know, God, you know, I praise you with all of my being kind of stuff. And that congregational raise your hands and worship. But there's also worship in looking around and seeing nature and looking at how beautiful it is. And then there's those moments in Psalms where he's going, God, where are you? You know, what's going on? And, uh, and then there's the songs where he's talking about how beautiful his wife is. Or, you know, I guess it was one of his wives, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. I'm sure it was Bathsheba that he was talking about right. a lot. So, What effect do you think performing Christian songs in front of an audience has on that audience? Well, I would hope that it would be moving. Um, you know, I, when I do when I do a show and when I write an album, I'm thinking about the show and and what I'm going to do live. And um, you know, I want I want for people to have fun. I want them to party and and clap their hands and you know and sing along and and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, I want to um, you know hit people between the eyes with that moment of worship. You know, uh, and I think that that's what. Uh, when I look at the acts that really inspired me when I was younger, the artists uh, and the bands that really inspired me when I was younger, it was those kind of groups that just wrote great songs that you could sing along with, they could rock out, but then they'd hit you with that moment of, you know, where you just go, wow, like I just got spoken to. I, I have a blog where I talk with fans a lot and hang out, and it's kind of become a discussion forum for fans just to hang out and talk about what's going on in their lives, and that's been really cool. And, um, I don't know. I mean, there's so many different moments that uh, I, I feel like I have this group of fans that have become friends over the last couple of years, and that to me is a really cool thing. You know, I don't know. I think that a lot of people are so scared that, uh, that people are going to get weird and, and that kind of thing. And you know, the way I view it is that I'm a normal dude who happens to be talented in one area that most people aren't, and I got lucky enough that I've been able to use those talents. But these people are as talented as me in other areas. And, and uh, it doesn't make me special that I can sing or write songs. All it does is just make me different. And so I try to treat it in that way of just enjoying spending time with those people. Right. So on your blog, can your fans interact with you and ask you oh, yeah. questions? And... Oh, yeah. I mean, I my blog is just, you just search Google, you know, uh, Chris Sly's blog, and, you know, it'll bring you to my blog. And, uh, is that what I, it's called? It's, Why don't you tell us what it's it is? From, so it's it. from my mind to your eyes. Okay. Just easier if you Google Chris Live blog because it's long. But uh, <laughs> it's one of those things where uh, I, I post and I'll talk about something that's going on in my life. And uh, and then, you know, the fans will just kind of start talking and, and uh, 
about what's going on in their lives and it usually starts off with a discussion about what I've talked about in the blog and then it just kind of over time morphs into this thing where it's kind of just discussing what goes on in their life and they talk to me and ask me questions about the music business and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's just a cool, cool thing to just to hang out with friends. Yeah. Yeah.